I, th I thank the Lord for uh, this church, for the many years that they've supported our ministry there in Mexico. Uh, thank you for praying for us. Uh, I've met some people that tell me that they pray for us and cannot uh, express, I, cannot, I don't have words to express our gratitude uh, for all that you have done for us in, uh, there in Mexico. And uh, it's an honor to be here. Uh, God has blessed um, this country because of churches like these. Amen. Churches that are preaching the gospel, reaching people, sending laborers around the world. What a, what a, what a blessing, what an example. And also I want to uh, thank uh, this church and churches in this great country for what they've done for Mexico. Uh, the, the gospel has grown in Mexico. Uh, it's, it's incredible what God has done the last 25, 30 years in Mexico. Uh, churches are springing every, up everywhere in Mexico. And uh, it's because of all the American missionaries that gave their lives many years ago and paid the price for the gospel to be able to flourish. And all the churches in this country that have sacrificed and have prayed and have given, uh, thank you. Thank you so much for that. And may God continue to use this church and churches like these in this great country and uh people have asked to, if you know about my wife thank you for praying for karen um her health has not been well for the last eight years she's um she's doing fine she but she has a lot of health issues and just thank you for praying for us i do really appreciate that so much i'm excited to be here i've been praying for this conference and uh i i thank the lord for uh each um uh, each one of you that are here tonight, may you stand to your feet, please, and open your Bibles to the book of Matthew, chapter 28. <clears throat> I don't normally preach in English, so bear with me if I get stuck, okay? <laughs> um, if you will read with me, verse 18 through 20, I appreciate that. Matthew 28, 18 through 20, if you would read with me, please. Let us begin. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever, to the end of the world. I'm gonna to speak tonight and, and struggle a little bit to know what to, to, to do to speak on tonight, but I'm gonna just give something very basic and I pray that the Lord uses it to remind us, what is missions? What is missions? Heavenly Father, thank you for this church. Thank you for Pastor Goddard, his family. Thank you for the faithful uh, families that have uh, help build this church and and Lord what a testimony and Lord uh, thank you for their vision and their heart to reach the world and I pray that you bless tonight uh, I know people have worked all week and they've driven hours all week and thank you that they're here tonight and Lord without you we are nothing we ask for your presence we ask for the fullness of the Holy Spirit we ask that you would speak to our hearts and our lives tonight Use Brother Avila with the Spanish, and thank you for what you've done through him there in Mexico. And Lord, thank you for your goodness. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Although missions is not a, a, a word found, per se, in the Word of God, I believe that uh, doing the work of mi missions is very biblical. Sending fourth laborers around the world. It's biblical. It's important to understand what missions is all about. In 1723, a man named, he was a count named Nicholas Sinsendorf, pastored a church there in Moravia. It's, it's, Moravia was what is today in Central Europe, uh, east of what today is the uh, Czech Republic, in the eastern part of the Czech Republic. And Nicholas Sinsendorf um, was a pastor who, who was, had influence in other churches, and he invited the churches to get together once a week 
uh, to pray for the world. And they, they, 50, more than 50 people came uh, to pray uh, once a week for the world. And during that prayer, prayer meeting, the Lord called the first Moravian missionaries, three young men, single men, to give their lives to preach the gospel to the, to the uh, Africans who were slaves in the Caribbean. And God used uh, the testimony of these three young men and, and a movement started. And by 1760, uh, 330 families, Moravian families, have le had left Moravia and had gone to many parts of the world, including North America, including uh, the continent of Africa, including places like Burma, India. And, um, and, and those first three young men who, who went to the Caribbean, uh, they, in the years later, they saw over 10,000 African slaves come to Christ. You know, that's what missions is. It's people going to preach the gospel where Christ has not been preached. There in, in Matthew 28, it says there um, in verse 18, all power is given to me in heaven and earth. Go therefore and teach all nations. What is missions? First of all, missions is understanding that we have a commandment to take the gospel to every nation, every people in the world, to all nations, all people of the world. Now, Jesus said there in Mark chapter 16 and in verse 15, uh, Jesus said, uh, going into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's a commandment. It's a commandment here in America. It's a commandment there in Mexico. Uh, 33 years ago, when the Lord allowed us to start our church, uh, there in, in Mexico, three months after we started our church, we had our first missions conference. And we had just a couple, you know, like 30 people come into church. And uh, by God's grace, uh, our church supports uh, 170 missionaries around the world. This is a church in Mexico. Uh, last year, we gave close to $275,000 to missions, a third world country. And now, it's all God. But, but see, but because I, I understood that Mexico, Colombia, America, we, no matter where we're at, Christians need to understand that there is a commandment to take the gospel to every creature around the world. Let's look at the example of Christ. Look with me in the book of Mark chapter 1, please. Mark chapter 1. We have a command to, to, to take the gospel to every nation, to every creature in the world. And look, let's look at Christ's example. Mark chapter 1, please. Mark chapter 1. The Bible says there in verse 14, Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Then it says in verse 38, And he said unto them, Let us go into the next towns, that I may preach there also, for therefore came I forth. And the Bible says in Mark in Matthew 9, 30, uh, 35, that Christ visited every, every city and every village there in Galilee. At that time in Galilee, there was 204 cities and, and villages in Galilee. The Bible says that Christ um, went to every single one of those villages, every single one of those towns, because he knew he had to preach the gospel. That's exactly what today as Christians we need to do. Have a plan to take the gospel to every creature around the world. Why? It's a command. Christ gave us a command. But look with me also in, in Matthew um, 28. It says, to all nations. First of all, we have a commandment. We're to take the gospel to, to teach all nations. Then second of all, what is missions? Understanding that there is a need. There's a need. There's a need around the world. Did you know that there is 3 billion people in the world that have never heard the gospel? 28% of the world's population is considered non-reached. That means that 20% of the world's population does not have the Bible, the Word of God, does not have one church of any type, does not have one uh, preacher, missionary preaching the gospel. 28% uh, of the world population is not reached. There are over 3,000 languages 
in the world that don't have the word of God. Not one verse uh, translated in that language. There's over 6,000 indigenous uh, uh, groups around the world that have that have no missionary, that have no Christians. And we're, we're, we're approaching almost 8 billion people around in, in the world today. And yet, my, my brother and my sister, we need to understand that we have a commandment. Whatever circumstance we're living, whatever's happening in the economy, whatever's happening in our governments, we as Christians have a commandment to take the gospel to every creature around the world. Islam, for instance, 1.4 billion people. It's, it's a, it is the biggest religion today in the world. Actually, it is the fastest growing religion in the world today. While in some countries in Africa, we send four to five missionaries, the Muslim countries are sending up to 1,000 missionaries. The, the, the oil money that many of these countries produce is, goes to support Muslim missionaries that are taking false message to the countries in Africa. There's a great need around the world. Japan, the, the um, um, brother Brandon and his family going to Japan. 130 million people in Japan. Did you know that in the last 20 years in Japan, there's 300 it, there, there's the, uh, the 300 new religions and, and um, sects have grown in Japan in the last 20 years. 86% of the uh, cities and, and towns in Japan have not one preacher. There's such a great need around the world. For instance, countries like Iran that are closed. Did you know that in Iran, they have, they speak 31 different languages in Iran. Did you know that there are 60, 66,000 villages and cities in Japan, I mean, I'm sorry, in Iran, and only that they know of, when I, when I, when I studied this, only six of those uh, uh, towns or villages in Iran had a gospel testimony. India. 1,600 different languages spoken in India. Only 687 of those languages have the word of God. There are, there are two church, I'm sorry, there is one church in India for every 2,000 towns in India. 500,000 different uh, cities and towns in, in, uh, in India have not one gospel witnesses and I can go on and on and on in Afghanistan 48,000 musts in Afghanistan Andorra Andorra it's a small country 80,000 but you know I've not in, when I was reading this and, and there's not one church in Andorra not one preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ there is such a great need. I had the privilege of visiting several years ago in, 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 in Egypt, in Alexandria. But the Boltros is uh, Egyptian. God is using him in a great way there in Egypt. And driving back from Alexandria, uh, go, going into Cairo, I could not believe the uh, Cairo has over, I think it is 12 million people. 12 million people. And, 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 and such a great need. We need to understand that we have a commandment. Commandment to take the gospel to every nation in the world. We have a commandment to take the gospel to every creature in the world. And, and, and there is such a great need. Please look with me in John chapter 20, please. John chapter 20. If we understand that we do have a commandment, and we see the need around the world, therefore, we need to be willing to send missionaries around the world. Then we need to be willing to support missionaries. That's what missions is all about. 
Missions is understanding the commandment. Missions is understanding the need around the world. And missions is understanding our need also to send laborers to preach the gospel around the world. That's what missions is all about. Look with me in John chapter 20, please. Every passage of the Great Commission, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and, and Acts, has a different emphasis. And the emphasis in, 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 the, in the Gospel of John is to send labors. The Bible says in John chapter 20, verse 21, then said Jesus to them again, peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so sent I you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. As the Father hath sent me, Jesus was willing uh, to come. The Bible says, just listen please, and, and, and um, the Bible says, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his power might be rich. As, my, as the Father had sent me, the Father loving the world, Christ willing to give us life, Christ willing to die for us, Christ willing to, to, to become poor that we may be rich. As, as the Father had sent me, so send I you. And, and that's what missions is all about, willing to give, willing to sacrifice, willing to give our lives, willing uh, to do what we can as Bible believers to get the gospel to those that have never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. Christians be willing to go. Churches be willing to send. Please look with me the book of Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. The Bible says there in verse 15, Nay, Philippians, know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church com communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica, ye said once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that, you, that amount may abound to your account. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an order of sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well pleasing to God. But my God shall apply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Willing to give. Willing to sacrifice that the gospel may be preached around the world. And yes, we have a command. And yes, there is a need. And yes, in obedience to Christ's command, we need to be willing to send, willing to support uh, missionaries that will take the gospel to, to, to people that have never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. But yea, there needs to be Christians, families, young people willing to go. Churches willing to send. Churches willing to, to give. Churches willing to pray. Churches willing to sacrifice that the gospel may be taken to those that have never heard. And yet, also, Christians willing to say, Lord, here am I, send me. That's what missions is all about. Look with me, please, in the book of Acts, chapter 13, please. Acts, chapter 13. The Bible says there in In verse 2, the leaders there in the book, in the church of Antioch, the Bible says, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, separate me, separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them 
away. Churches willing to send and Christians willing to go. Remember, I was um, I graduated from Hals Anderson College and I worked as, a, as an associate pastor and a Spanish pastor there in Northwest Chicago. Uh, for it, uh, I worked for Pastor Keith Gomez uh, for three and a half years before going to Mexico. And um, I, I remember th that um, I had been asked to go to Cuernavaca. Uh, to, I, was, I was working with Brother Gomez and I was invited to go to Cuernavaca, Morelos, uh, to, to speak at a fifth anniversary of a church there in Morelos. And um, I went and I had the privilege of meeting the Patterson family. Uh, Mike Patterson went to heaven uh, not too long ago. And um, great missionary there in, in Mexico. God really used him in a great way. And um, I fell in love with missionaries um, that trip. Seeing, uh, if you, you, the word in Spanish is hueritos, blondies. Uh -huh. Loving Mexican people. Sitting with them, hugging them, uh, laughing, and, and, and ministering to them. And, and, uh, and Brother Shindell was, was the missionary that invited me to go speak and seeing how he gave his life uh, for those people. And, and you know, there's something really special about missionaries. And as I flew back to, 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 to the States, I said, Lord, if you would call me, I'd be willing to go, to come back to my own country. And, and God used, and, and I thought to myself, I'm a Mexicano. These are my people. And, and, and I thought to myself, if Americans can leave their country to come to a country where the water makes them sick, uh, typhoid, my wife got typhoid three different times, four different times, that's why her health is, is so bad. Willing to, to, to learn a new language, willing to, to, to leave. I said, Lord, I would be willing to do the same. And God used, God used American families in Mexico to speak to my heart. And I thank, I thank the Lord the day that he confirmed to me that he wanted me to go back to our, 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 our country. Let me just tell you this story. Um, in 1989, I was at part of the missions conference there in Atlanta. And uh, I, I arrived at the home that was putting us up as missionaries. When I walked in, there was a, a family, and then there was a, there was a missionary that came up to me, and, and he said, uh, he says, what is your name? I said, I'm Louis Ramos. And I said, what is your name? He says, I'm Tommy Tillman. He says, uh, he said I'm a missionary to Thailand. And he said, uh, where are you going, Brother Ramos? And I said, well, I'm going back to my country of Mexico. I'm, I'm from Mexico. And, and, and he said, in what city? Because I, I, I know Mexico. I've been through Mexico many times because before going to Thailand, I was a missionary in Belize, and I've, I've driven the length of your country several times. And I said, Brother Tillman, I'm going to the city of San Luis Potosí, Mexico. And, and he looked at me, and he began to cry. And, and, he, and he said, let me tell you a story. Brother Ramos, eight years ago, driving back from Belize, coming up, up north to the States, on a sunny morning, I arrived in the city of San Luis Potosí, Mexico. He said, I, I arrived in the downtown area of San Luis Potosí, and he said, I, 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 I looked for a church to be, able to, to be able to congregate, and I found none, a, a, a Baptist church, Christian church. And he said, all I found was pure Catholic churches. And yes, in the downtown area, there's 11 Catholic churches in our city. And he said, Brother Ramos, I, I couldn't rest that afternoon. I, 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 and, and, and so I decided to stay. And, 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 that, and he said, that night, he said, I couldn't sleep. I was staying at a little hotel near La Alameda, which is the central part of San Luis Potosí, the center. There's a park there. He said, I got up. And he said, all night long, I walked around that park, and I prayed all night for San Luis Potosí. He said, I asked God, God, if you, if you want me, I'd be willing to come. But Lord, if, if not, please send someone. That's what he's supposed to see. He said, Brother Ramos, for the last eight years, I have prayed for someone to go to San Luis Potosí, Mexico. Then he took his hand and he touched me right here. He said, Brother Ramos, you're the answer to my prayer. And you know, and, and I thank the Lord because 
many of my relatives have gotten saved. Uh, my grandmother, my mom's mom, her family were very Catholic. I have a, a great uncle who was a priest in one of the main churches in San Potosí. And so we were nuns there in San Luis Potosí, very Catholic family, my mom's side. And, uh, and when I first got to Mexico, my grandmother, my, my mom's mom, of course I'm a grandson, but she did not like the fact that I was there to start a church. I remember one time we were in supper with, at her house with my cousins, uh, a couple of my cousins on my mom's side, and, uh, and I began to witness to them. My grandma got behind me, and she said, she did this to them. I saw a reflection in the window. She... <laughs> My grandma was a very strong Catholic. Um, several years later, she fell and broke her hip. And uh, I began to visit her every week. Found out she needed medicine. I began to buy her medicine she needed. And, um, and finally, she came to one of our big days and heard the gospel. Did not get saved. Then she came to another big day and did not get saved. But I, I developed a very loving relationship with my grandma. And then she would allow me to pray for her. And I said, Grandma, can I read you a psalm? And I would. She let me read her psalm. But when I began to witness her, she said, Son, I'm okay. But um, on a Sunday morning, I had gone to a, a bus ride to pick people up. My aunt calls me. She said, uh, she said, Luis, your grandma is very, very, very sick, very ill. She's an ambulance on the way to the hospital, and she asked for you. I drove to the hospital. My grandma was, she was in, in still going, she was going to go into, in, into, into, into intensive care because uh, she was starting to have a heart attack. But I was able to talk to my grandma. She was still loose and still, I was able to talk to her. And my grandma trusted Christ as her savior. Amen. That day at four o'clock, my grandma went to heaven. I thank the Lord for the gospel. I thank the Lord for, for the prayers of Brother Tommy Tillman and, and the fact now that thousands and thousands of people have been saved in hundreds of churches all over Mexico and God has been so good. But you know, it's because someone was willing to, to go. Christians need to be willing to die to themselves. Did you know that 95% of preachers around the world preach the gospel to their own people? 5% of preachers are missionaries. Christians willing to go. Please look with me in the book of Acts chapter 16, please. Acts chapter 16. Understanding missions. We have a commandment to take the gospel to every nation, every people around the world. We have a commandment to preach the gospel to every creature around the world. There's a great need around the world. There need to be churches willing to send missionaries around the world and support them. Then it needs to be Christians willing to go. Willing to go. What is a missionary? Please look with me in Acts chapter 16. In verse 9, in the vision appeared to Paul in the night. Remember that Paul wanted to go east, and the Holy Spirit forbade him. Then he went up to, towards the, uh, Black, the Black Sea, and, and the Holy Spirit forbade him, and he came down to Troas. And there that night, the Bible says, in the vision appeared to Paul in the night, there stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, a surely uh, a gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. What is a missionary? My brother, my sister, it is a divine call. Paul says that he, he was certain that God had called him uh, to preach the gospel there in Macedonia. And then Paul arrived in Philippi. Philippi was the first European city to hear the gospel. And from there, the gospel went to Europe. And then from Europe to America. And from America to Mexico. Praise God for the obedience of Paul. Missionary is a, a missionary is a, it's a, a, a divine calling. 
What is a missionary? Missionary is a, call, a, a command. It, I'm sorry, it's a calling to give your life to a people of a different race, of a different culture, to give your life to people that are unlovely in many cases. I thank the Lord, and, I, and I'll say it again, for the missionaries that have loved Mexico. But it's, 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 a, it's a call. The Bible says that, that the, Paul obeyed that vision to take the gospel uh, for those people in Macedonia. Missionary, a calling to give your life to people that have a different way of life, different language, different culture. A missionary is a call to preach the gospel where Christ has not been preached. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord hath called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Eighty to ninety percent of missionaries serve in countries that have some of the gospel. Some gospel. Only two point five to four percent of missionaries serve people or places that have no, have never heard, or have no gospel at all. How there's a need to take the gospel to those that have never heard. Missionary is a divine command. It's a calling to give your life to different people. It's a calling to preach the gospel where Christ has not been preached. And it's a call to obey the will of God. The Bible says he immediately endeavored to go into Macedonia. Obedience. Are you willing to obey the Lord this week as far as what, we, what would he have you to do as far as giving? The gospel may be preached around the world. Are you willing to be obedient to whatever the Lord asks you to do? Are you willing to be obedient if there's a voice in your heart that says, I want you to give your life to preach the gospel where the gospel has never been preached? We're going to be obedient as Christians to do our part. Remember the first time I, I went to a missions conference in 1986. I had never heard of the concept of faith promise. And, and that, in that missions conference, the Lord showed me that I was responsible to do my part to get the gospel around the world. And since then, my wife and I have been involved in faith promise giving and oh, how God is blessed. God is good. So as we understand, what is missions? Missions is obedient to the Great Commission. Obedient to take the gospel to every creature. What is missions? Is understanding the need that there is around the world. What is missions? Uh, churches willing to send missionaries and support missionaries around the world. What is missions? Christians being, being willing to die to themselves, to die to their will, to die to the dreams and say, Lord, I'm willing to do the gospel where Christ has never been preached. That's what missions is all about. May God bless you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you've done in our lives. Thank you for this church. Thank you for their testimony. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be a part of your plan that people around the world hear the gospel and be saved. Lord, may we, may we have a willing heart May we be obedient to your leadership, 
what the Holy Spirit is laying on our hearts this week. Please bless. Continue to speak to our hearts. Amen. Let's stand together with our heads bowed while the instruments play. You take a moment alone with the Lord. Pray for our church. Pray for our young people. Pray for our adult couples. Many a great missionary was successful in the business world and took off to serve another country. Pray that God would protect our church and bless it, allow us to reach many people here that we might reach many people around the world. Young people, if you feel liberty to pray the prayer I did, I told God I am going to the mission field unless he called me to stay. I'm not saying you should pray that, but I felt like 90% of the world doesn't have hardly any preachers. It just made sense that I would go. And it was God who stopped me and kept me in America. You that pray, that pray earnestly, pray God would bless these missionary presentations as our young and old watch the videos. Amen. If I can get your attention for just a moment, you can stay at the altar if you're still praying, you're either seated or standing. Um, just real quick, I uh, want to mention, I said 7 o'clock, it's 6 o'clock tomorrow, 6 o'clock Sunday night, both nights, 6 o'clock, and want to be a part of that. And uh, let's, let's ask God to work in our hearts. And in the Spanish department, I don't know if you've been up there um, lately, but I went up the other, uh, most Sundays I'll go by, and I look in the Spanish auditorium, it's, it's fairly full, just like the English auditorium, 